Hey everyone, it's Dylan and Charlie from the Black Forest Wood Company. This week we're going to be completing a large furniture package for our client down in Texas. I hope you guys enjoy this process and if you can leave a like, that really means a lot to us. Okay, so now um, that we're back from BC, we had our trip. Uh, you guys saw Jerry hooked us up with a bunch of leaves. So what we have to do now is actually press them all out and iron them out to dry them off. Um, we got to do it pretty soon as well because you can see they're already kind of starting to mold and the reason we're doing this is we're actually going to be casting these in the river of our client's table uh, and in the legs as well so it should be pretty cool. Okay so then our process is we've got um, regular paper on the inside, two sheets of it with the leaves in between, then we have wax paper and then once you've ironed them they're nice and dry, they are very fragile, so you have to be careful. Um, basically just kind of feels like a thin paper and it maintains all the color in them too. So like we've got green ones, yellow ones, um, some nice reds kinda, and we've got that whole pile there to dry off. So after leaving the leaves to dry for literally like two years almost, I think it was. It's time to put this table together and do the pour. So we're doing a metallic red base layer in this piece, um, kind of to go for that Canadian theme. That's why the client selected this color. And it's kind of the same red that we did in our full send table. If you guys watched that video we did a while back. We are using a little bit of liquid dye in here as well. We're using the Bordeaux color effects dye just to kind of make it a bit more intense. And we're pouring this base layer about half an inch to three quarters of an inch thick. Uh, we want it to be opaque so that you can't see any light through. Uh, and we do need to have it be thick enough as well so that when we machine off on the bottom side, we're not making it too thin and exposing back through that base layer. And what we're pouring here are actually the legs for the table. Unfortunately, we missed some of the pours for the, the tabletop, but the legs have more resin anyway, so it makes for a cooler video. And this piece here that we're pouring is actually both of the legs. So after this is done, we're gonna cut this piece in half for length, and it's gonna give us both of our legs for this table. Once that base layer's in, we placed the leaves down, and then what we're doing now is just adding a really thin layer to kind of secure them in place and stop them from moving. And then once this thin layer has cured, we can go ahead and add in our final top layer uh, to finish the casting. Will, but I don't want to. I hate it. Like, I have no idea that everyone else has to hear me talk like that. I feel bad for everyone I've ever talked to. So it's out, it just doesn't look like it is. And this client is actually ordering two tables from us. So this one's a little bit more tame and I guess you could say uh, a more normal design. Uh, this is gonna be for his main home down in Texas. The other Canadian theme table is actually for his cabin and that's just kind of a homage to his Canadian heritage. So for this main home table, we're just doing a tinted black resin. Uh, same thing though, it's still gonna have those matching river legs. And this is actually the first time we've done river legs in this style. Uh, we've incorporated resin into some coffee table bases before, but nothing quite like this. So it's, it's pretty exciting for us whenever we get to try new designs like this.
And once the piece is demolded, we take it down to our Avid CNC for flattening. One thing I should mention for flattening too, it's always best to try and get it flattened as soon after that seven days as you can, because the longer you leave it, the harder it gets and the more brittle the resin becomes and sometimes you can even get chip out. So once the pieces are flat, then we take it over to our sliding panel saw to actually cut everything to size. So the first thing that Spencer's doing here is ripping the width on these pieces to make sure that they're gonna fit in the plates that are gonna mount these legs to the underside of the table. And then once that's done, we can rotate this piece and actually cut the whole slab in half to give us the two separate legs. And now we are completing the exact same process for the Canadian version of the table legs. So what you're looking at here is actually all of the components of the table sitting together. So we've got the live edge top, as you can see, and the two river legs. Once we're done that, then it's time to actually route out the recesses for our mounting plates to go in. So we usually kind of end up having to do these by hand. You know, we could probably make a unique jig for each piece, but we end up just marking it out, drawing the shape on, routing up close to the line and then we'll just use a chisel oftentimes to square out those corners and get everything straight. Now, unfortunately, Jekko did the spray finishing for these pieces on the weekend when we were not there, but we did manage to capture some of the ceramic coating process. So our ceramic coating can actually be used over any type of finish. We use it over our oil-based finishes and our polyurethane-based finishes because no matter what the underneath base coat is, it is always gonna add water protection, stain protection, chemical resistance. It's gonna make it hydrophobic and it's just gonna give a a slick feel to the entire surface so we put it on literally every single piece we do. Uh, we were hoping that our top plates would fit but it looks like there was a little discrepancy and it was only like one millimeter out so what Jack is doing here right now is he's just paring it off with a chisel and that's going to allow those legs to slide on perfectly. People think we're woodworkers but we're actually chemists. <laughs> I'm a comedian. I don't know what you're I'm so funny. Look at the bags under for the size. He's so tired of me. He's so f***ing I'm what? I'm not you should be in like the movies. I should be in the movies? The movies. I'm Seth Rogen. <laughs> what? And that laugh has made him hundreds of millions of dollars. And I'm so jealous of him. Just do like a sumo wrestler smack. Oh, dude, I love it. Come on, come on. It's going on. You know you want to. It's good. You want to. Yeah. Punch it.
make sure the table is between the legs, so we got to move it over. Yeah. So we got to lift up. Yeah. Shift. Okay, we've got room here. You got room there? Yeah, we're good. Clear. All right. So two guys support the legs. We're gonna have to. We can't just lift it. We can't just flip it straight over. We're gonna have to lift it up. Josh, can you take this front corner? I'll take the bottom corner. Yeah, I got the bottom corner. You got the side. <laughs> Sorry, that's what I meant. I was like, roll it! Damn it! You're saying backwards. Like, oh, I don't think we want it right here. It's gonna be right here. All right, Curtis, lift. It's fine. And towards the shop. No wheels. All right. I got the card. Okay. All right. And up. Oh, that was heavier than I thought it was going to be. Good. Alright, take the car out. Are we going that way? I have no idea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, there we are. The tables are all finished up. So again, these are California Clara Walnut, both of them. And the legs are actually cut from the same tree as the slabs that were used in the tops here. So these turned out absolutely perfectly. I hope our client likes it as much as we do. If you guys feel that we earned your like and we made tables beautiful enough that we deserve that like, uh, please give us it. And even better, if you want to subscribe, then you can see videos like this every week. So thank you guys for watching and we'll catch you next week.